Hi, my name's Nikki. I'm the Obsessive Bookseller, and welcome to this month's installment of Read, Burn, Hoard. This is my favorite ongoing series on this channel where I pick one shelf a month and kind of go through it really thoroughly, decide whether or not I want to keep, read, or donate the random titles I come across in my collection. Now, at the end of last month's video, I selected shelf number 32, which is all the way at the very top. And wouldn't you know it, this month I was like, please make it something down low where I can actually reach it. No, no, looks like we're gonna go through everything up first, which is not a bad thing. And in fact, I haven't reiterated kind of what the main motive behind this project has been. So let's go over that for a second. So I really want a comfy chair in this room. And to do that, I need to make room and find places for all of these mystery books. And the eventual goal, panning over, is to free up enough space to have those mysteries span that very top shelf so that all of my unread stuff is on this side of the library. And so far we're making some good progress. I have one shelf down there and then two up here that I've gone through. But anyway, the shelf we're looking at way up there with those Brent Weeks, so let me get a ladder. All right, this is what we're looking at. I have a whole bunch of Lauren Swat Evan books, a couple of David Weaver, Weaver, Brent Weeks, and then Wise and Hickman books. So instead of standing here like this while I talk about them, I'm going to grow a brain and bring them down to eye level. One moment. I feel like this is going to be a weird month because I've tried and put down a couple of these already. So when I was a teen, I read The Obsidian Chronicles, it's a series of trilogy about dragons by Lauren Swat Evans, and then a couple of his Tales of Inerin books, and absolutely loved them. thought they were so good. So I went through, and the only other books available were these, I think, hideous, self-published. By the way, I've been known to criticize the self-published market years ago. This is why. All of the books that we got on the shelves as booksellers looked just like this, and you could tell the quality was subpar. It has come a long way since then, and I take back all of those criticisms. The books you can find nowadays self-pub are gorgeous. Anyway, so I need to do some research on these. I think they're a part of the series. Yeah, Lords of Deuce. Maybe it's not going to take that extensive of research, but I've read the first book of one of these already. The Misenchanted Sword. It's over in my red collection. And I liked it okay. This author has a very flowing, relaxing writing style. Now, this series, I was wildly interested in at one point. Read about 100 pages into this first book and realized that I was just bored to tears. And I don't know if it was a mood thing or if it was a, like, or plot pacing type of thing. I'm just not sure. But even though I tried it and put it down, I still collected the beautiful trade papers because I love the covers. And I was hoping that eventually if I went back to it, I'd like it more. Just another random book by him, The Spriggan Mirror. This author has such a like variety of writing. I think that's why I like him so much. This guy's got little aliens coming out of his mirror with a dragon, so that would be interesting. Oath of Swords, first book in the David Weaver series. Now, I talked about this one in my sh Sunday Shelfie series. I think it's going to be a good candidate for burning. I hear it doesn't age well. There might be a lot of sexist content in it. And if I wanted to pick up a David Weaver, he's usually known for science fiction. I don't think I would start with his fantasy stuff. Seeing as these don't even have covers, and that little tab means I can get it free from the library as either an audio or an ebook, yeah, that might be a no-brainer. The Lightbringer series by Brent Weeks. So if you can see, I have actually started this one. Made it about 100 pages in and then put it down, and I just wasn't digging the writing. I have read his Night Angel trilogy and liked that one. But something about this one just wasn't singing to me. Now, I'm a little terrified to start this one. 
I have heard lately so many people talk about how disappointing it was, especially near the end of the series. So started out okay, cool magic system, but then it petered out. But at the same time, I've got a friend who knows my taste in reading really well and says, you're really going to like this. So I'm, <laughs> I have no idea what I'm going to do with that one. It seems like an extensive time commitment for what may not be a very good payoff. So interested in that. Maybe. No, I don't know. Then a couple of wise Hickman books. I have read quite a few of the uh, novels that these authors have come out with. So almost everything Dragonlance. I did the Dark Sword series. I did the Deathgate cycle. And these, along with one book up there called The Rose and the Prophet, which honestly should have been shelved right here because it comes before them individually. This is all I have left, essentially. So Sovereign Stone, which my mom read and really liked. That's always promising. And then this kind of random dragon ship series, Bones of the Dragon. I do love nautical fantasy, so that would be kind of fun. And then Mistress of Dragons by Margaret Wise, solo. I mean, anything to do with dragons I really like. And I've been kind of hanging on to these for a rainy day. So I'm going to have to take a little while to decide what I want to read. Now, this adds a little bit to the equation. I am still reading Southern Fire from last month's Read Burn Horde. I didn't have a chance to finish it, so I'm kind of carrying it over to this month. So this is a physical read. Ideally, whatever I choose to pick up out of this one will be uh, an audiobook so that I can do two at once. I don't want to wait the whole month trying to play catch up. And based on my little tabs here, these are ebook only. These have audio versions. These have audio versions. Unfortunately, these are ebook only, which is a huge bummer. I'll double, te I'll double check to make sure that since I marked them, they haven't come out with a audio version. But this is probably the series I'm most interested in. That one is audiobook, and that one is audiobook. So just a knee jerk, I think I'm probably going to finally get into this one here. But let me do some research really quick to see if... Well of Darkness has an audio. Even though I'm really enjoying Southern Fire, I'm kind of regretting that it's limiting what I'm able to do this month with this section. I was hoping I'd get an area with the most exciting books all available in audio, but whatever, you know, works out how it works out. But I am definitely going with Mistress of Dragons this month. To be totally honest, I've heard pretty mediocre things about it, but you know, Things with dragons in it spark my interest more than most, so we'll see if I like it more than the average opinion. So I will update you soon. Good morning. I have an update for you. So I started Mistress of Dragons, and I like it so far. It's pure dragon awesomeness. Very descriptive. Dragons are involved immediately, and they're kind of a society. And what I like most about the book so far is kind of the structure. So... You have these humans who have their own perceptions of the dragons and what's going on in the world. And then the dragons have their perception and they're, they're different. So there's room there for a kind of reconciliation. But yeah, it's creating a lot of conflict. And I think it's, it's really cool so far. Very info dumpy out the gate, which I expected. But I don't think I'm minding it quite as much because the dragons are so integral to the plot. And so far it's reminding me of the later books in this series, The Dragon Champion by E.E. E. Knight. So, and normally I prefer my dragons a little more bestial, but in this case it's not bothering me at the moment. We'll see where it goes. But if you're gonna write a book about dragons, I wanna see lots and lots of dragons. And so far I'm at the equivalent of about page 50 and dragons in abundance, it's awesome. Hey, I have kind of a weird Read Burn Horde update for you. So last month I started Southern Fire by Juliet McKenna and didn't make it very far before I had to wrap up the video. So I have been continuing to read that book this month. 
really enjoying it. Uh, the world building element is my favorite part so far. I like the characters as well, but just exploring this new world is what's really drawing me to the story. I'm about eh, almost 100 pages in. I think it's like a six or 700 page book, so not very far. I think admitting you have a book buying problem is the first step towards maybe kind of working on that a little bit, but I haven't been reading for very long and I'm already really excited to buy this series. The covers are so beautiful. It came out in like 2003 and I did not appreciate the cover for the book that I have. It's probably one of the reasons that I haven't read it because, you know, if you've got a book about all this world building, don't put a person on the cover, put like a landscape or something. But evidently in the UK, they came out with new editions in 2021, like October, so not that long ago. And they have these beautiful hardcover editions and I really want to get my hands on them even as a collector, but I'm kind of worried that, well, what if I end up not liking the series and I've got all these books for nothing? But yeah, this is where the problem comes in because I feel like I'm okay spending quite a bit of money on them anyway. <laughs> so let me just flip the screen and show you the beautiful covers that I'm looking at. This is the new lineup and I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Now, I mean, I'm fully aware that these little dodo chicken things on this one, but I mean, come on, these are so cool. And having these as full-size hardcovers on my shelf. Now I'm getting them from Book Depository and the paperback versions, trade paper, are only $5 less expensive than the hardcovers. So I feel like I'm willing to spend an extra 20 bucks to have everything in a pristine hardcover. But this is, these are the kind of covers that if other booktubers held them up, I'd be like, oh, I really wanna read that series. So hopefully, the books hold up to how beautiful these editions are and I can, I don't know, maybe finally have a gem on my hands after all of this research I've been doing in my collection. I'm still thinking about it a little bit and Book Depository takes a little while to deliver everything, but I, you know, could very well see this entire collection in my hands before the end of this video. We'll see how it goes my favorite phrase. Hello! I finally have an update for the Readburn Horde. So as of right this moment, I have just like a minuscule amount left in this book, maybe like two chapters. And it was an interesting read. It was a quick read. And I can't say as I'm totally blown away. But right now I'm really interested in really like dark, robust fantasy novels that make you really feel something. Back like, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago, if I had picked up something like this, I would have absolutely delighted in it. It's a very simple, straightforward fantasy. It's got like, like five main characters. And the plot is not super complex. In fact, the plot is probably the only thing I really had issue with in this book. It was a, it was a pretty decent book otherwise. Very loosely, there's a society of dragons and a society of humans. One of the dragons has decided to go rogue and create this massive society of humans beholden to her, but they don't know it's a dragon. And kind of the structure of everything that this dragon has built, kind of perpetuating, making these humans kind of, kind of her slaves, but they feel like they have free will, if that makes sense. So the part of the plot that doesn't make sense to me is instead of going and taking care of this problem, for some reason they needed one human, so the dragons, this like massive group of dragons, and this all happens within the first couple of chapters, but the this massive group of dragons is like, oh, this is a dragon threat. Let's go get a human to draw her out and we'll kill her. Throughout the entire book, nothing about that ever really made sense to me. Maybe it was explained a little better and I just didn't pick up on it. Maybe I'm not smart enough to figure out why that's a good plan. But either way, the entire premise felt thin. It felt like kind of a means to get these human characters from one place to the other to do what the author wanted to do with them, because otherwise I can't see any reason why this human needed to be involved. And that's not even the worst of like the just go with it type of thing in here, but that's all I'm gonna talk about to avoid spoilers. So with that in mind, almost finished with this book, I'd say like a solid three star. 
I enjoyed the process of reading it. Margaret Wise is a very relaxing writer. The characters were okay, mediocre, kind of thin. The dragons were really cool, but they were only really present at the beginning of the book. So story is probably the only thing that's keeping me interested in the book and kept me interested all the way to the end. I really didn't feel like I was rushing to finish this one, which is a good thing. To that end, I have books two and three in this series. This is the second one right here, and I am actually interested in where the plot is going in here and would be interested in reading more in this series, but I did the first one on audio because I have like five ebooks going right now and I really cannot afford to add in another one. So instead of picking up one of these books physically, I think I'm going to wait until the next Audible sale to see if I can get them at discount. Because I'm pretty sure I've seen this series on sale before on there. If I had them on audio already, or if they were available at my library, I would have just continued. But it's not worth an extra $20 in Audible credits for me to continue right now. It's just a three-star read. I am interested in continuing, but I think I'm going to shelve it for a while until, yeah, until I can get a cheaper audio or until I finally finish all of the ebooks I have going and physical books, then I can dive in. But for now, like, I think it's safe to say I'm interested enough to continue that I'm going to hoard these, which is better than I was expecting. Anything with pretty striking covers like this, I always think I'm going to end up unhauling, but Yep, keeping these for now. Glad I had a good experience with the first book. And we will see what I'm going to experiment next for this month. Let's talk about Lauren Swat Evans for a minute. So I organized these finally. This set right here are the Legends of S Star. They're all in the same world and they are, I think, pretty standalone e books. This is a trilogy. And then this set right here is the Lord of Dus. I have no idea how to pronounce it with that little mark on there, but this is an actual series right here. And then we have a little random one here. I want to take a minute, because these, these books do not scream, hey, that's something that Nikki has in her collection. These seem a little off the wall for me to have. Let me show you why I'm not immediately, like, knee-jerk thinking I want to unhaul them. This is my Lawrence Watt Evans Red Collection. Dragon Weather is the first book in the Obsidian Trilogy, and to this day it is still one of my all-time favorite dragon books. I love this author's writing, I love the dragons in the story, I thought it was just, just a really cool, unique take on things. Definitely has some twists in there that I wasn't expecting, and completely devoured that trilogy. Read the first Legend of Its Star, self-published, and I do not believe... This one has, by the way, been published traditionally. It just wasn't available when I was buying them. And I don't remember much about it, but I remember enjoying the journey. And then these two books over here, Night of Madness and Eth Star Novel. I don't remember much about that, to be totally honest, but I must have enjoyed it because I kept picking things up. Ethanolin's Restoration. It's a relatively short standalone book, and it is one of the most delightful things I have ever read. So with all of these random things from this author, I think it's safe to say that I really like his writing style, and I find a lot of things about him incredibly charming. I do not find those self-published covers enticing to read at all, but I have to remind myself that the things that I have read from him, there's not been a thing I haven't enjoyed yet. So hopefully that kind of helps explain why I'm keeping those really ugly books. So something fun I could do if I wasn't in the middle of a bunch of physical reads right now is pick up another Legend of Ethsar, see how that goes. Try this one again to see if it was a mood thing when I read it the first time around or if I really will like them this time. Or dive into this first book. Depending on if I like it or not, I could possibly keep or unhaul these ones. So strategically, that could be the thing to do, but I'm trying really hard not to read things for this series just because I want to see if they're worth unhauling. I want to read the books I'm most excited to read, and unfortunately, nothing in this lineup, with the exception of this one, 
am I super excited to get to next? Something about Black Prism is just putting me off this time around. And this would make the most logical sense to read because it's available as an audio for free. But I'm just not sure if I'm feeling it. I may change my mind as the month goes on. But what I am sure of is that these books don't have covers. Oath of Swords is the first one in the series, and then I have a couple more in that same saga. I'm fairly certain that I'm burning those this month. So we have a red horde burn. Now, I think I got this book from my mom, and I am not so sure that I'm even interested in reading it at all, but it's a Wise Hickman hardcover, so I think I'd feel okay still hanging on to it. Also, it's not free from the library. I'd have to spend an audible credit on that, and I'm not interested enough in it to do that. This is kind of a weird shelf. Almost every other shelf on here, I've inspected a lot of them, almost every other shelf has something on it that I am so excited to get to. This is the only dud shelf. <laughs> but we gotta go through with them all eventually, so here we are. I know this is gonna be good. I just have a feeling. But I don't have the time or energies this month to start something like that. I think my next step might be to look into Lawrence Watt Evan again to see if there's anything that has become available in audiobook. Because they had, that Obsidian Dragon Chronicles finally got a audio release and I picked them up because I wanted to reread the series. So let me see if any of these others got picked up as well. And that could solve my I'm buried in physical reads problem for the month. Okay, according to research, this is book two, this is book three in the Ethsar, and both of these are available in audio. Nothing else here is, so I might try to read that one this month as well. We'll see how it goes. I started a little early. I still have at least three weeks left in this project, so I don't have to do anything today. I think I might think about it for a little bit. I've been thinking. This is my Read Burn Horde project. And I feel intense pressure to pick up another book from what I've got going on, just so I can explore more on camera and show you more. But I am still in the middle of Southern Fire from last month's pick. I picked it up right at the last minute. Now I know better than to do that. If I'm going to do a physical read, I need to pick it at the beginning of the month. But I am so glad I chose this one. I love it so much. It is such a cool book so far. And I'm in the deep end enough that I am ordering the full hardcover set of the entire series that came out last year on Monday when I get to work. And I'm only 20% into this first book and I know it's something that I want to explore. So I will probably just continue highlighting this one through the next couple of weeks and make this my immersive experience. And then when I finish it, then if I still have time, I will try something else over here. Because I was like... I was thinking that if I picked up another one of those books that's going to require a physical read, then I'll be taking time away from this and then I won't get this done. And then I'll go into next month two books behind. I don't want to do that. And I could pick up those Ethsar books. It sounds like I'm lisping when I say that. But I could pick up those Ethsar books on audio. But I don't really want to spend a credit on something I really don't care about reading right now. So this might be like a true hoarding month where I just decide to keep almost everything and yeah focus on reading the one that I'm enjoying from last month. The whole purpose of this project for me was to get to the books that I'm super excited to read and nothing on that shelf makes me excited to read it right now which honestly should also maybe put it up for candidates for unhauling which I will be considering over the next few weeks. Luckily I already have one going. And kind of unluckily, because I would have started that Margaret Wise and Tracy Hickman one had I not already had so many physical reads going. I'm working to reduce that. But anyway, enough babbling. This is what I'm doing for now. I'm so constrained by my own rules, and they are so arbitrary, that I feel guilty jumping outside of the constraints of what's on that specific shelf to continue what I started last month, but just feels like the right thing to do this time around. 
Next month will be different and we will have a whole new host of possibilities to explore and hopefully it won't be as boring as this shelf right here. You watch. I'll pick the freaking Anne McCaffrey shelf, which is everything, one author. <laughs> and I just jinxed myself, I'm sure of it. But this is how I'm feeling this week. I change my plans on a whim all the time. So we'll see how I'm feeling next week. But for now, loving this one, going to continue with it. It has been about a week and I'm finally not feeling so cranky about this shelf. And I have a couple of updates for you. Let me show you what we're looking at. The underwhelm for the ending of this series has me seriously considering whether or not I even want to venture back into it. I did put it down after 100 pages before I'd heard any feedback on it. It was like right when it came out. And that's a weird thing for me to do with such an interesting sounding fantasy. I mean, the magic system is based around color. That just screams me. <laughs> Anytime you color code anything, I'm there. But what I've determined is, say I read it and absolutely love it. I have a book club edition here and I will not, like, it's not even a very good one. I think I picked it up secondhand. And so even if I want to collect it at some point, I will not be keeping the book club edition. So. That frees up a little space. And so I have pulled a couple of books to research. The Lure of the Basilisk is the first book in this quartet here. And I'm going to see if anybody has read it and what their thoughts are on it. I was initially thinking to unhaul this one. It's a book club edition. And I'm a little feeling a little burned on that one and wondering if this is going to be it not very good at all. Uh, my mom read this, I believe, and I don't think she was, you know, too excited about it one way or another. But then I read the excerpt and actually liked the way the story sounded. So I'm going to check reviews on that. And then of all of them on here, this one just looks so funny. The description on the back cracks me up. It reminds me of some of those other ones that I pointed out by this author that were just a lot of fun. So Gonna research these and I'll let you know what I find. So this is an Ethsar novel. I did not know that, probably because it's in a different format, but of all of them I was thinking that this one would be the most delightful one to pick up, but reading just a couple of reviews online, uh, there's enough continuity between all of the numbered books in the series that uh, apparently this wraps up and answers some questions that a lot of people have had reading the entire series. So I'm a big enough completionist that I don't believe I'm going to go out of order. So unfortunately I can't, I don't feel good just going rogue and picking this one up, but it's a definite keeper. In fact, knowing that I have that one to get to is motivation to read a little faster on some of the other books. Lure of the Basilisk. Across the board, people are like, Oh, you know, it's a mediocre, but, you know, really nostalgic classic fantasy because I read it 10, 20 years ago. And it seems like a lot of the more positive reviews are kind of playing off of the nostalgia rather than the actual merit of the book itself. And I did not see a solid five-star read among any of the people that I checked out their reviews for this one. So I'm in a weird debate because I love the author. But just because I love the author does not mean I need to read absolutely everything by him, especially if this is the one series that I'm just kind of meh. I bought it on impulse when I was like 16 and have not felt any compulsion to read it since. So surprisingly, I think I might actually consider this one for burning. I know I want to read Esthar. I know I want to read those, but this one, eh, I think I could do without. The plot is interesting. I love his writing style. See, he just has this really flowing writing that it's kind of a relaxing read. But is it worth keeping four books just for that relaxing ex experience? Because I am sure there are dozens of other books on my shelf that I'm actually interested in reading that will provide that. So this one's on the bubble. Attempt number three, Bones of the Dragon. So across the board, the main character was such an idiot, 
and I hated all the characters. That is what almost everybody who reviewed it said. Now, granted, I don't mind... I was going to say I don't mind characters who are unlikable, but it depends on why they're unlikable. If they're stupid, then I don't like those characters. If they're amoral, then I can get behind that. <laughs> I was already on the fence with this one. The only reason I was thinking about picking it up is because the premise sounded interesting. But across the board, people are like, well, that's why I picked it up too, but it sucked. I'm kind of obstinate, so if I had already been really excited to read it, the reviews would not have scared me off. In fact, I tend not to read reviews for the books that I'm really excited to read, just so they don't, like, knock the wind out of my sails before I even get started. And I want to form my own opinions, but because this one was already on the cusp and I was already considering unhauling it, I think that might have kicked it over. Like, I didn't see anything in there that compelled me to pick it up, and sometimes the negative reviews... I, I read them and I think, you know, that wouldn't bother me, so maybe I could actually give this one a chance and end up liking it, but in the interest of the long-term goal of getting a more comfy chair in this room than this really uncomfortable one I'm sitting in and wanting to make some progress, I don't see myself ever picking this one up. Maybe if my library came to own a few free audio copies, I would consider it then. But would I waste my precious physical reading time on it? Not in the slightest. Okay, adding one more to the unpile pile and then for sure keeping this F star novel. In fact, this is number nine and I've only read one, so that means I am actually missing a couple, which is a little disappointing. But these are on the cusp. I'm going to set them up here because this very well may be one of those series that I end up putting in the bin. And then when I'm done with this first round of this project and I go back through, I might pull them back out. Especially if my newfound enthusiasm for the Ethsar series gets some attention and I decide I would rather read anything by the author. But for now, it's a strong maybe for burning. But what I'm thinking now, I really want to get into this one again. Um, just a reminder, I've read a couple of these already. Ooh, I actually do have nine. Sweet. I don't remember anything about the Misenchanted Sword. It's the first one. But I think if I'm going to explore the series and do it justice the way I want it to and get all of the nitty gritty, so by the time I hit this point, I'm actually invested and I remember everything, I think it would make the most sense to add this one back to the unread section and reread the first one. Now, I did see, I think I mentioned that these two are available as audio, but the rest of them aren't. Like, I know this sounds funny, but this feels like the right decision. Just taking those out of the equation and seeing what I have here left on the shelf, I'm much more excited about the prospect of this than I was about trying to do these. So I might keep those set aside. These ones, I just freaking love the cover art. I just think it's so compelling. But the first book, oh my gosh, 100 pages in, halfway through, not a lot had happened. But I was interested, just not interested enough to have it take up my physical reading time. This is such a weird shelf. So now I'm asking myself, do I have time between now and the end of this particular month of reading to start this series again? And do I have the overall time and commitment energy to actually continue in a timely manner? The jury is still out. I'm going to think about that. At least for sure I know I want to keep them. And that's kind of the whole point of this project. Am I excited to explore them eventually? Yes, very much so. Am I ready and capable of diving in without any hesitation right now? No. <laughs> but the month is still young. We'll see how it goes. I say that a lot. Ooh, so the box of books that I've been patiently waiting on has finally shown up. 
I have two orders on the way. Hopefully this is the one that I've been dying to get. Let's go open it. Mail. So if I'm lucky, this is going to be a replacement for Southern Fire. I've been t talking about this constantly over the last couple of Reed Burn hordes, and I'm sure my patrons are sick of hearing about it, but this should be the box of books that I probably shouldn't have bought, but I did anyway, and now I'm really excited that they're here. So. This is book one, book two, book three with the weird chicken things, and book four. This is really kind of an odd format. They're a lot, they're a lot thinner than I thought. Usually when you order from the UK, they print them on these extra thick books, but that is incredibly satisfying. They almost look self-published to me. Wizard Tower Press. Yeah, I'm getting self-published vibes, but I could be mistaken. Per my Read Burn Horde, I'm not supposed to be buying a lot of new books. That kind of defeats the purpose, but made an exception in this case. I mean, it's kind of cool. I discovered something I liked well enough to invest in the rest of the series, so... Yeah, I'm considering it a win. Anyway, I'm so glad these are here. And one of the side benefits is that this older copy, one that I really don't care for the look of the cover at all, is now going in the burn pile. And here they are. So cool. Hello. Our household really likes minions. Banana. Well, I have stalled long enough, and now I have reached the end of my filming window for this month's Read Burn Horde. So I'm going to wrap it up, show you what I'm doing with the titles that are remaining, and pick a new number. My favorite part. I'm really, really hoping that there's potential for some audiobook reads on the next shelf that I pick, because I am still in the middle of Southern Fire from May's pick. So yeah, still working really hard at getting through with this. Now granted, I was in the middle of a ton of books, and I have reduced that down to just two. this one and one other that's a higher priority obligation read. So if I can wrap that one up, then I can spend all of my time reading this one, and that would be great. I did notice after I got them, sat with them for a while, that the naked hardback on these contains the illustrations without the writing, which I think is just freaking cool. Anyway, let's wrap it up. I am committing to putting that Lauren Swat Evans series in the unhaul pile for now. So everything right here I am burning. I read this one, so that can be shelved somewhere else. Hoarding all of these, and then I decided I'm going to reshelve the Ethsar books back in the unread section because I would like to start at the beginning and work my way through. And I've decided I'm so excited about that prospect, it's such a high priority, that I'm going to take the first book in the series and find room for it in my high priority shelves. Which probably means I'll get to it sooner than later. So now what I need to do is stick those way back up there and put those in the garage. And here's the result. I love all that extra room there. We are definitely making progress and I'm really happy with everything that I chose to keep. Ta-da! Okay, here's what we've collected so far. I think this is the first month I'm adding mostly non-strips to the pile. So, I mean, that's kind of satisfying. I'm not going to leave that there for now. All right. I think I've done, let's see, 
I think this is my fourth month and already we are two thirds of the way full with this big bin. So that's really cool, making some good progress. And I think the only ones I'm still thinking about pulling back out are those Watt Evans. But it will depend entirely on how the Star series goes over the next several months because I'm hoping to have that read before I hit every shelf, which is quite likely considering how many I still have to go. There's 34 total. That's almost three years worth of work. It's funny. I'm sitting in my chair kind of leaning to be straight, and I just decided to, like, scooch the chair <laughs> or move the camera. So my favorite part, time to pick out what we're going to be working on next. Oops. Shelf number 26. Okay, just what I can see from here. The shelf is high up, but it's not at the super top, so that'll be nice to have a little bit of a break. So join me next month as I tackle shelf 26. And yeah, just thank you so much for joining me for this series. It's still my favorite ongoing one. And yeah, I'm really appreciating now the highs and lows <laughs> that I've been through with it so far. And just even glancing at the shelf up there, I think this is going to be a pretty fun month. Anyway, thanks again, and I hope to catch you next time. Bye.